Time is 7.19 for this special town hall edition of Wake Up Wyoming as we're talking about the energy industry and trying to get it back on its feet. But of course, all of this happened because, well, here comes, well, here comes 2020, frankly, Nick. But then here COVID-19 comes rolling in and that disrupts the economy. Dr. Mark Dowell is with us because we have to talk about this worldwide pandemic. Morning, doctor. Good morning. Thanks for being on, Doctor. Um, I, I wanted to get right, right to it with you, if you don't mind. Um, can we talk about the situation in Natrona County? I mean, even this morning, Glenn, you mentioned um, a lot of folks are looking at opening back up, getting things going again. Um, but then yesterday, the State Department of Health reported the largest single-day increase in new COVID-19 cases in Wyoming so far, with 36. And uh, nine of those were in Natrona County, Doctor. Yeah, we're, uh, we're tracking these right now, but it looks like some of the source, uh, young people, Young people gathering, partying, and uh, not, you know, no face coverings, no social distancing. That may be what's going on now, but that's also being seen across the country. We're tracking it. We're looking at it this morning, in fact, in a meeting. And, I mean, is this like graduation-associated stuff? Um, is this kids who are out of school getting together? Is it, is it college-age kids? A little bit of everything. It has nothing to do with graduation. Um, it's people in the summer getting together, going and having parties and gatherings, and um, doing what kids do. And some people in their twenties and that kind of thing. And, and part of the issue is I won't take that personal. Get together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things you do is you get you get together and then you go to play place B and place C and place D and then. You may be spreading it, so it's it's a real issue here. But that's again, it's not unique to Wyoming. Sure, sure. Um, and I, I guess another question I wanted to, uh, to ask you is, how, how are we handling some of these prevention guidelines here in Natrona County? I mean, you know, every time I open up my Facebook, um, I'm seeing uh, a few new people talk about how fatigued they are having to, you know, wear a mask into Albertsons and stay six feet away from people, you know, like it's some serious manual labor or something. Um, uh, how are we handling that? Are we doing a good enough job? Um, and are we going to avoid uh, a second wave here? I am sick of doing it myself, to be honest. I know everybody is. But no, we could be doing a lot better job. Um, people have fatigue, and I'm seeing people doing it much and le- much less frequently than they had been. And the problem is, look at what we're seeing now in the state. This is not in the Toronto County, but all over the state. Um, we need to regroup with this and go back and say, look, economy is incredibly important just like the governor said the way to keep your businesses open is to keep people from getting sick and the number one thing that will do that beyond even social distancing is the face covering well and not even just that doctor i've noticed that when there was i always go sunday shopping at sam's club that's my time to go and so here's this line everybody's distance sure everybody's wearing a mask but also as people are walking in everybody's hand sanitizing and then everybody's wiping down their carts that has ceased i don't see that anymore so besides the face mask there's the other things that people were doing and i don't see anybody doing it anymore yeah, and the governor's messaging and our messaging is pretty clear. We want you guys to do this because we don't want something to happen like what's going on now. And this is really concerning. I mean, if you look at our numbers over the last two weeks, it's growing. And what is the biggest concern, without being an alarmist here, is that when you see it in young people, it's what are you going to see two to three weeks later when they're at home, around their parents, around their grandparents? What's happening in Houston, Texas, where I trained? They don't have any ICU beds Hmm. because the older people are now getting the illness from partying from weeks ago by the young people. So we all are intertwined here. and If we do this right, the economy stays stronger. But I don't think young people realize they have a huge role in what it's going to do to businesses in Wyoming. So, Doctor, here's a photo I saw this morning, all right? Guy wearing a mask, right? Uh, And printed on the mask. You know, you see these printed masks with different things. Hell, we've got some with station logos on them here. This mask says, this looks like a simple mask, but it's really part of a vast liberal Chinese conspiracy to destroy America and subvert white men. 
Um, so <laughs> just give me your response to the politic- uh, politicization of, of all these masks. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's not... become such a contentious issue, and it seems to me that when you take something that is a legitimate public health measure to keep people healthy and keep them safe and prevent deaths and, and keep ICU beds open, how are we letting it become a political issue? Yeah, it's a conspiracy by the mask producers to sell more masks. <laughs> <laughs> Or some people, they don't want to look at their faces. I don't know. <laughs> well, it helps me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, and the, the problem is, this is there's nothing political about a, an infectious diseases emergency. There should be nothing political about it. We have one goal. Keep our public healthy. Keep our businesses going. Keep our entire country well. And this is the one way to go. And we know, study after study is showing simple face coverings, but you know, in, in Wyoming, we haven't had a lot of death, and so the perspective is different. We have 125,000 people dead in the U.S. Those families would have a very different perspective, if, you know, if they were in Wyoming. So it's hard. It's almost out of sight, out of mind, and that's part of the problem. When we talked about this, I don't know if it was the last time you were on Doctor or, or earlier uh, in, a, in one of these town halls, but um, we talked about how when, when you have measures that are effective in terms of spreading, uh, slowing the spread of the virus, preventing deaths, the pu- public perception is going to be, oh, well, it's not that big a deal, and why do I have to do all this stuff when really you know, nobody's even getting hurt? Uh, that, that's, a, that's a huge logical fallacy, isn't it? Oh, completely, completely. We're living, we really are living in a bubble right now. It, Although that bubble's starting to uh, crack in places, we have been very lucky. We don't really know if it's going to be a second wave. This may just be an up and down long wave without a giant explosion in the fall. We don't know that. You can see the sun, the sun belt is really growing in a different part of the year than the East Coast is and the West Coast. And so we don't really understand what's going on with this virus yet. But we're all worried about fall because we're all going to be inside. Mm -hmm. But I want to emphasize again to the community, the goal is to get the schools open, and the goal is to keep them open. Who knows? None of us would have predicted that in the middle of the summer or beginning of the summer in Wyoming, we would suddenly have this big uptick. We expected what's going on now to begin in the fall. So we're just monitoring this like crazy. It's still a, it's still in a, a situation that's evolving, and, and we don't really have a handle yeah. on exactly what the trend is. Um, and I, I wanted to ask, too, um, you know, a, f- a question I see, again, a lot on social media. Um, so you've got people, if I go to go into Albertsons or go into Walmart, um, I've got to wear a mask, right? I've got to stay six feet away from people. Um, the question that I see asked frequently, and, and I figured you're the person to ask, um, is why aren't protesters, uh, you know, marching in the wake of George Floyd's killing, even locally here in, in Natrona County, but um, in Cheyenne, in Laramie, um, why aren't they being required to follow the same guidelines? There aren't, here's the problem, there are no legal requirements. And so we can message whether it's a protest or a Legion baseball game or whatever the the gathering is, this message is the same. We want you wearing a face covering outside. And it doesn't matter. We're not getting by. I don't care what the activity is. Mm -hmm. The same messages for the protest were for Legion baseball. Same thing. One this the, is what we need you to do, but we don't legally enforce it, of course. And so, who knows? If you look at some of the protests across the country, there were a lot of cities where people were wearing masks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The majority were, but not here. But that's just a reflection of what's going on at Albertsons and at Sam's. I mean, some people are wearing masks, but you go to Home Depot. Um, I was in there last week. I wouldn't say 10% of people were wearing a face cover. I've noticed the same thing at grocery stores or, or if I have to make a, a, a trip for something. Um, so the bottom line is the messaging from the health department from the state has been consistent. You still need to wear a mask. Please, please do that for all of us. Yeah. All right. Thanks Doctor, for joining us, Doctor. Thank you for coming on. I do appreciate it.